What's up, man? It's your boy Carcino here. Let's talk about it. Captain Jack, Stephen Jackson. Let's talk about what Captain Jack did. Now, a few hours ago, Captain Jack decided the best way to do this was to do it all the way. Cam Jack spoke on how he, at the altar, stopped his own way. Now, I'm quite sure somebody else going to have it and post it. It was pretty long, so I, I didn't want to go through putting you through the entire roller coaster. Very interesting story. Very en engaged. insightful you know doing their own thing but he said some other stuff on there too I don't think it was directed at me but if it was and that would be ill-advised. He was talking about people taking little clips and saying stuff wrong. and He wasn't going to respond to somebody who had 60,000 subscribers. So it probably wasn't me. I got more than 60. But, you know, it is what it is. I never been in into the for the numbers game. I did more views when I had less. But algorithms change and you move from east to west. But anyway, that's just that numbers game. Now let's talk about it. He told him about everybody in the story. He met his girl in New York City. Pulled up on him. This is early in his career. He's young. Met her in New York. You know, he hollered at her, liked her. They started kicking it, you know. They had kids together what have you and long story short he get into it when he was in San Antonio one of the reasons he's out of there the first time was the fact of the players wives they didn't like her and he kept worrying man this girl ain't right for you and you know and he man you can't tell me you know about who my personal life and this and that and so he ended up you know not coming back to the Spurs based off all the stuff that was an activity the NBA wives you know not feeling her so and I told y'all that's like a gang and that's funny that he mentioned that because I was just bringing that up and I told y'all it's NBA these wives clubs is is they they did Vanessa Bryant dirty, and I, I told you I was gonna do a video on that, and he brought he ended up bringing that up about what happened to his girl. So now that's something else added to the fire, you know. Just another one of the stories of many that goes on in the NBA wives club. Now. There are a lot of different scenarios that take place um, when anybody's dating somebody. Ain't no better than to call me now. I mean, like, completely no better. So now you got, you got another situation on hand where you have... 
somebody young in love doing what they do. Nobody's immune to it. And he also brought up the fact about not having a father figure, you know, a father in his life. And he had to learn a lot of things on the fly. Unfortunately, a lot of African-American kids that grew up in the 70s and 80s and things of that nature, and even in the 90s and now, grow up without a father in the household or someone to rear them to teach them how to be men. Or they had to learn a lot of things and mistakes on their own. Now, here's another situation. going back to it you know I think he's playing in, I don't know if he's playing in the other way he was playing it at the time but they were um, getting married in Houston you know he's from Port Arthur Texas and you know he wanted to get me getting married at the crib he spent four hundred thousand dollars on the wedding and they were supposed to get a prenup and they have to both agree, of course, to get a prenup down in Texas to get it printed up, and get it started, and everything else. So he keeps telling them, hey, you got to sign the prenup. You know, he had already signed his half. So both sides had already agreed to do it. But, you know, here she is. She wanted to have a certain pastor there because, you know, he's like, look, we can get the pastor, you know, right down the street. And he's way cheaper. He's spending already 400000 on this way. I mean, he had Bobby Valentino over there singing, singing the dog on at the wedding. He had everybody there. So the way he tell it is, of course, way better. It's his story. But I'm just giving you the broad strokes. And he was talking about how Stout Marbury was just wilding because she hadn't signed the prenup. And he already told her, look, if you don't sign that prenup, we not getting married. And so she wanted her pastor to do it, a pastor she ain't never met before. You know, they she had never met her friend suggested that she get this pastor. So he get this pastor out there. And sure enough, he finds out that she hadn't signed it and so he was like well that's it she ain't signed it we ain't getting married I guess she figured well, if we keep going there's no way he gonna pull out with all these people in here and all this humiliation and all that he'll just go on here through this with the service so she didn't sign it at the day at the altar people sitting in their seats everything the doggone pastors in the back, like, wait, wait, wait. Because Smallberry was like, then what we here for? Oh, hell no. It's over. Ain't no win. <laughs> so Smallberry wilding. So at the end of that, you know, he, the pastor's like, look, I don't believe in prenup. I, you know, let God handle it. Y'all get married. He was like, man, look, God want me to get this prenup. <laughs> Look at past no disrespect to you, but we ain't in the same tax break. <laughs> so it's, you know, so it was a whole different situation. You know, he wasn't trying to go for that, you know, so he was up to hip to the game, but it was too late. But I guarantee you, all of these signs were here beforehand. So she calls him in there, she crying, and she's like, I'll sign it, I'll sign it. But he knows, too, you can't sign under the rest. If you sign something under the rest, they can end up getting it kicked out. Because she'll say, I signed that under the rest. You know, I was crying in there, and then he came in, and, and I signed it, you know, just because I didn't want to be under the rest. So he was like, uh, -uh it's over. So, after that, you know, he was all broken up, went out, ended up smashing one of her friends. <laughs> he like, two girls that was with her went with us, and I ended up smashing one of them. He was like, yep, I had to get it back somehow.
So. I don't know who this person is. Sorry about that. So, anyhow. He also says, like, you know, because they got kids together. You know, he was playing down in um, Golden State. And for his kid's birthday, he had the clown. He spent about 13000 on this for the birthday party. And he flied him all down. Got to fly the mother, the girl that messed up the whole wedding and everything else. Bring the kids down. He got the clown. He got all this. She come over. Filed for child support and lied and said she lived in the same house. And the judge saw she was doing this from city to city, trying to get more money out of him. And he trying to do the right thing. Man. I'm telling you. That's a very serious day. And Stack said he cried, too, after that wedding. Because he loved her. He wanted to marry that woman. You know, and... He was found himself to be a victim of somebody who didn't appreciate him. She just, she just saw this guy is... Just won an NBA championship. You know, he got money finna come in. And she saw him only as a check. Now, I'm quite sure the signs were there. But sometimes you got to look at your own faults. And I'm not saying I'm perfect. But... I think we play a, a huge factor in a lot of these decisions because as he's telling the story, I'm sitting there saying to myself, you didn't see this coming? Like, who waits to the day of the wedding and don't have a prenup sign and still going along with getting it set up? I'm mean, like, if you don't sign this thing by the end of this week, I'm not even proceeding further. What the heck could be stopping you from signing it? But when you're playing games, you know, you ain't paying no attention and you forget that she ain't signed it. And then you be, oh, did you sign that yet? No, that'd be the first thing we do. See, this is what I'm saying. She she knows, she know, you know, if I keep them high, you know, keep, keep them on the draw, keep them, he'll be fit and forgot about it. See, this when that smoke and that drink come to haunt you. Because a lot of the stuff he didn't went through. Are just really, really bad decisions. That could have easily landed this man in jail. For the rest of his life. And I'm like, how much did weed and drink play? How much did we and drink play in that scenario? We got to ask ourselves that. And maybe one day, you know, we'll get an answer. So he could say, I, like, I took his story, chopped it up. And did all this and that. I don't know if he was talking, who he was talking about. But anyhow, if you know, he was trying to tell people, the young people out there, learn from his mistakes. And he's right. Learn from Captain Jack's mistakes. Don't smoke weed. Don't hit the drug. Get off that stuff 
now. All these pills and drugs and weed are rotting your brains. They help make even poor decisions. They impair your thinking. So that's all I got to say on that. To everybody out there who's been supporting the page and hitting up the cash app, I appreciate that. Carcino's the name. Um, yeah, we're going through some rough times. Everybody is, man. We all feel in the crunch. You know, some worse than others. But, you know, people helping each other. That's all that matters, man. Yeah, me, I'm, I do different things, man. I don't do what everybody else is doing. You know, y'all don't see it, but I get you know, it's not for everybody to see. And I've been helping people, you know, who really can't get supplies. Been helping buying foods, canned food goods, and things of that nature. Feeding people in the neighborhoods that really need it in the city. You know, they, they can't even, they don't even have a grocery store near them. They don't have a Walmart, like, right down the street. You know, they little marts is closed or they don't have enough supplies at that place to even, you know, go that far. And people out there who are trying to survive right now, listen, there are supplies there. They don't have to say lights all in order for it to be a cleaning device. There are a lot of different ways to clean with stuff. A lot of things have the alcohol in it that you need. All you have to do is look at the ingredients on all these things and you'll have them already in your home you could buy bleach and make your own mix it with water whatever and make a it's different ways and then they're off brands who do the same thing you guys are leaving the off brands which makes no sense to me they both if this thing says it kills 99 percent of the germs and the other one said we killed 99.9 .9 percent of the germs it's still killing germs. I'd rather go with one of those than nothing. But, you know, it's your decision on what y'all want to do. Now, I mean, y'all know, yeah, check out that Carcino for Life uh, uh, Patreon, too. Got another one coming today. Just hold your head.